Now, Lou Jen Julio, past student body president and young trustee, will introduce President Muller. And we also have something special we'd like to give President Muller from the student body. So. Before I begin, I really want to thank, uh, I've been neglecting, you know, my duties as, as a former student. If I didn't thank uh, all Johns Hopkins University's officials for, you know, the wonderful opportunities they gave me. And, uh, you know, especially my parents for making me what I am today. And I love you. Um, <laughs> it's really hard to put into words an introduction for a man who's not only been and led the Johns Hopkins University through extraordinary change in, over the past 18 years, but also served as a tremendous visionary in promoting Hopkins' role in education, both here at home and abroad. Here at the Homewood campus, Dr. Stephen Mauer has often seemed more of a legend than life to many students whose only uh, personal contacts may have come at orientation freshman year and again today at commencement. Yes, uh, I think there's many anecdotes and t-shirt designs for this guy. Uh, they abound. But uh, I would like to try to give you a little insight to a man who's, uh, who's always made time to give me counsel and uh, historical perspective not only on campus politics, but on how to be a true decision maker and a leader. Uh, in fact, I've discovered some amazing parallelisms between Dr. Mueller's life and my own, which, uh, which, which may give you all a better understanding of the complexities of both this man and his office. Uh, first, it, it's fairly obvious that both Dr. Mueller and myself are completing terms as presidents this year. He, from the university and myself from the student council. But very few people know this, that uh, in 1977, when Dr. Mueller had the vision to incorporate the Peabody Conservatory of Music with the Johns Hopkins University, I was receiving my very first accordion. Thank you. <laughs> And yes, <laughs> when Dr. Mauer decided to take up a residence in historic Fells Point overlooking the harbor, little did he know that that very same Fells Point would become a Friday night mecca for students of all ages. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and yes, the presidency is a complex office. Dr. Mauer himself has said that the time commitment can be broken into thirds, one third fundraising, one-third meetings, one-third decision-making. Well, I don't know much about the fundraising. I know a little bit about the decision-making, but, boy, I do know a lot about those meetings. I think between Dr. Mauer and myself, we've accumulated enough free meals to feed a small continent. I don't know. I could go on, but sincerely, as a recently retired representative of all the students of the Homewood schools, both arts and sciences and engineering, uh, you have our deep appreciation, Dr. Mauer, for your dedication toward our university. So on behalf of all of us gathered here today, I would like to present you with this token of our appreciation. It's an aerial photograph of the Homewood campus, and uh, there's a plaque underneath inscribed to Dr. Stephen Mauer uh, from the Homewood students, grateful appreciation, May 24th, 1990. Thank you. Thank you, Lou, for uh, the least boring introduction I have had in some time. <laughs> and thank you for this gift made possible by Japanese technology. <clears throat> All kidding aside, ladies and gentlemen of the class of 1990, with the greatest of pleasure, I congratulate you on receiving your degrees today for the second time for those of you who were here this morning and for the first time for those of you who were not. I would also like to congratulate you on the state of the world which beckons to you, particularly because it appears so much improved 
since you matriculated here four years ago, indeed even since the beginning of your senior year, which is now over. The, re <clears throat> the revolutions of 1989 have seen freedom restored to the peoples of Eastern Europe. Soviet power remained passive and restrained while this occurred. The communist ideology has been decisively rejected in the process. The Cold War has come to a sudden end, happily, without even much of a bang, except in Romania. The dreadful prospect of nuclear war is receding. There's obviously a great deal more to say about this, but it is your very good fortune that this is neither the time nor the place for that. However, as you leave your undergraduate years behind, there are questions closer to home raised by these events, which it is appropriate to place before you. The liberation of Eastern Europe is perceived as a triumph for freedom and democracy. I do not disagree with this assessment, but I do ask myself, and I'm asking you, just exactly what has triumphed and what that triumph means. You would, I hope, agree that we're not celebrating merely the triumph of consumerism. Of course, the peoples of Eastern Europe wish for an abundance of goods in their stores and the income to acquire the worldly goods that we here take for granted. But surely they seek democracy as well. How satisfied are you with what we have to offer them? You know, there's been little need for reflection to decide that as opposed to totalitarian socialism, democracy was infinitely preferable, even with all its faults. But we, and you especially, are at the dawn of a new era. The international threat to democracy is disintegrating. And we can now practice democracy for its own sake, not to prevent or oppose something worse. We can no longer label social critics as actual or potential traitors. We need no longer fear that vigorous reform movements at home might somehow play into the hands of a powerfully threatening alien <clears throat> enemy. In fact, we're now free, if we choose, to try a little glasnost and perestroika of our own. Uh, is that desirable or necessary? Let's just recognize that the democracy we practice is no longer, for both good and ill, what the venerable founding fathers fashioned. They envisioned an electorate restricted to white males of some demonstrated means and education. They did not foresee a vote for every adult citizen, nor the conduct of political campaigns on commercial television. They warned in the Federalist Papers against factions. They never dreamed of the lobbying industry nor political action committees. Please make no mistake, I do favor universal suffrage. But what can we say of political campaigns as commercial entertainment? Are we now condemned to prefer candidates for their looks rather than their abilities? How can the need for millions of dollars to buy television time fail to corrupt candidates? Is the sound bite a substitute for debate? What is there to choose between seductive advertising footage produced to glorify the consumption of tobacco or alcohol and seductive advertising footage designed to misrepresent the virtues of one candidate or to misrepresent the demerits of another. And worst of all, what has happened to leadership in our democracy? 
the courage to decide and the need to persuade voters that the decisions were right has given way to no-fault politics whose aim is to avoid decisions because only ambiguity fails to offend. Daily polls sample the prejudice and ignorance of voters and are then used to enable those elected to lead to pander to rather than counter the lowest public common denominator. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the way it is. But you only have to put up with it if you want to. I hope with all my heart that your undergraduate years here will motivate you to be leaders yourselves and to insist on improvement in our public life. There is no longer a red menace to inhibit you, nor will it now suffice merely to say that at least our system is better than dictatorship. With all my heart, I wish you, I wish you well as your life proceeds to new endeavors. But for your own sake, each and every one of you, and for that of this country, I hope also that you will choose to work for true democracy in the United States. Help put a stop to the sale of public office to the biggest contributors. Indeed, the truth shall make you free. Insist on truth in politics. Read my lips. No new lies. Godspeed, and may good fortune bless you always.